Welcome to our lecture online and before we continue with any more examples and, and parts of the theory of asses and bases, we want to get something very clear in our minds. All right, there's a problem with the acid as a proton donor theory and the base is an hydroxide ion donor theory. And the reason why we bring that up is because typically that's indeed what happens. An acid is a substance that donates hydrogen ions uh, to the aqueous solution and bases are substances that donate hydroxide ions to um, aqueous solutions and therefore they up the concentration of hydrogen ions or up the concentration of hydroxide ions in the solution but there's a lot of examples where that doesn't work uh, for example ammonia is a base and it's not an acid and the question is why look at all these hydrogen uh, atoms that it could potentially donate but it doesn't do that instead it acts like a base and not by donating hydroxide ions, but by simply acquiring a hydrogen ion from a water molecule, turn the water molecule into a hydroxide ion, and thus producing the ammonium ion. So the base, ammonia is still a base because in the end, it increases the concentration of hydroxide ions, but not by donating the hydroxide ions or donating hydrogen ions. So there is where the theory doesn't seem to work. On the other hand, we also have hydrochloric acid, where typically we like to think about hydrochloric acid as a typical equation where we have hydrochloric acid turning into hydrogen ions and chlorine ions and therefore increasing the concentration of hydrogen ions. But again, that theory doesn't quite fit because a hydrogen ion is a simple proton. So let's imagine that we have a proton in a, in a solution of water. Now water molecules are enormous compared to a proton. Matter of fact, I'm not even doing justice up to it here. A proton in size is about the size of a small marble in an entire football stadium. So you have a marble in the center of the pitch in an entire football stadium, and the football stadium would be the, the hydrogen, would be the water molecules, and the little pebble, the little marble would be the, the single proton sitting there. And so what happens is the single protons that are being released by taking uh, hydrochloric, acid, uh, hydrochloric acid and putting in aqueous solutions, those protons will not exist by themselves in those solutions. What will happen instead is that water molecules having these free electrons over here have a, a negative uh, charge, so they're polar molecules, they have a negative charge on this side of the molecule, so you can say that this side of the molecule is negative, this side of the molecule is positive, and the proton will be attracted to the negative portion of the water molecules, therefore uh, forming hydronium molecules, which are, of course, H3O+. Plus. So those are positive ions, and they act just like, they act just like uh, single protons because they have the extra positive charge, but then they, they of course, uh, size up to something as large as a water molecule, and therefore we don't have those tiny little protons floating around freely in an aqueous solution. So again, when you think of this equation right here, where you think of hydrochloric acid uh, liber liberating hydrogen ions into the aqueous solution, that's not really what happens. So even though the theory is a practical theory where we can do a lot of equations like this and work out a lot of problems like that, what happens in reality is that the hydrogen ion will indeed combine with a water molecule and form hydronium ions. So it doesn't quite fit the theory. So here's some examples where that initial theory doesn't work. Does that mean we should throw that theory away and not use it? No, not at all. We can still use it in many cases. Just keep in mind that it's not the hydrogen ion that floats around freely in the aqueous solution that actually turns into a hydronium ion. But for practicality, there's pl plenty of equations we can write like that and work with, and they'll be just perfectly fine. Just realize that's not really what happens in reality. And if you do that, there should not be any problems. So don't just be stuck on, oh, when it donates a proton, it's, a, it's an acid. And when it donates a hydroxide ion, it's a base. There's lots of other examples where that doesn't work. And yet, we still have acids and bases doing their thing. All right? That's how we look at it.